I'm delighted to be here today with Hannes from uh, Schimmel Pianos and uh, we've just had a tour and um, I've been playing a piano since I was four years old so I guess that's 41 years for me and I knew it would be interesting to see where they're birthed yeah, yeah. but it was totally mind-blowing and you said to me that's not an uncommon thing that happens with pianists when they come here. Yeah, that uh, indeed is uh, totally um, usual for us that people that are with working with the piano every day for hours and hours come to the factory and they are astonished by how many details and how much work with natural materials it takes to create the sound. So um, it's a usual experience here. I would say in the Western world that after the voice, the piano is the most familiar musical sound. But it is such a complex piece of machinery. How has that evolved, do you think? Why is it so dominant in, in Western music? It's, uh, it's hard to say. It's uh, the, the king of instruments. Maybe it's because of its complexity. Um, you can create so many different kinds of sounds and dynamics and ranges and all different kinds of music. It fits to all kinds of mu art, uh, pieces of music. I think that's where it comes from. It's, it's uh, not as simple as, let's say, a guitar. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's kind of quite interesting because I'm naturally fascinated by technology, digital technology, and I run a sample company and we, we've sampled eight pianos. And I would say that they're kind of unsampleable because there is so much chaos in there. Um, why am I obsessed with real pianos when there are so many digital options out there, do you think? Why, 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 why are they so much better? Well, just because it's un unsampleable. I have to say I'm impressed how digital technology is improving and improving and uh, what, what you can do with it, but still an acoustic instrument, maybe a piano or a violin, is something different. They are like they are a little bit like like a human being. They have a bad hair day one day and they have a great day, um, and depending on, on circumstances, humidity, they're just they're just different. It's natural materials. It's wood. It's felt. Um, and and what you said would be chaos going on. Uh, we would say it's all the types of dynamics you can get out of it. Um, it's just um, it's something. Totally different than digital. It's uh, not, not zero one. Yeah. I think the thing that the, the point that a lot of people miss with the digital era and digital age is music and sound and performance are based on feeling. It's not just sonic comparisons. And I think one of the th big things that we could see in the factory is the amount of attention that goes into the touch and the sensation of an instrument is also crucial. If you play, then everybody thinks of a pianist. I'm thinking about everybody playing. Yeah. You, you get, even if you are just doing simple pieces with an acoustic instrument, you get different feelings out of it, different sounds, different dynamics. Um, and, and you probably don't realize what's going on and you don't realize what is the difference to a digital piano, but you can feel it. You, 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 it goes to your heart and, and to your soul and that what's, that's what makes the difference. Uh, I'd lived in flats in London, you know, property prices, you, everyone has to live oh, in these yeah. boxes and finally got to a place which had a living room where I could put a piano in. So I went all over London trying to find the one and, you know, I think unlike furniture, you know, a piano is for many decades and hopefully my children will have it. And uh, I went into this shop called Peregrine's Pianos oh, yeah. and, uh, and this very uh, charming lady called Dawn, I think, um, she did the hard sell on the Shimon, and it's like, I, I know that I'm, I don't want to be told how it sounds, I don't want to be told about the history, I just want to feel it. And um, I had a budget, and the one I played and fell in love with instantly was uh, uh, half of the budget that I had. And I think what impressed me about this Shimon, I think it's a C116, um, is it was clear that the company had an adoration for making a beautiful sound even for an instrument that isn't exorbitantly priced you know it's it, i don't know if is that part of the philosophy here we, we take it that that a piano if you if you decide on buying a, a a new piano it's like going into a marriage it's something you you will have for a lifetime and maybe even your children will have it so what what happened to you and i would i would have said that even if you would have chosen a different brand mm -hmm. what happened to you you sit down you're falling in love, 
And do you only want that piano? In your case, you luckily it was half of your budget. Yeah. <laughs> it might be the opposite. Um, but that process you described is exactly what we want. Mm. We want um, to do the best. And not everybody is going to fall in love with what we do. There are different types of sounds. But that's what we want. Sit down and love it. And again, it's because the feeling, it's how what the type of music I play, the type of shapes I make, and this, this interaction. And this is why I would really encourage people, if, if you've never played a real piano, <clears throat> you really should have a go, because <clears throat> the one thing that digital technology definitely can't do is give you the sense of the mechanics that are going on and the sound coming through your fingers. It's really quite... Yeah, it's, it's an, an all-body experience somehow. Yeah. Um, even, and, and with the progress in digital technology, they try to mimic that with all kinds of different um, devices, the vibration and the keyboards and everything, but it's just, it's, it's digital, it's zero one, it's, there's no, no interims, no, no, it doesn't touch you still. We started out in, in Leipzig um, in 1885 um, and the, 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 the motto of the, of the founder, Wilhelm Schimmel, was quality will prevail. Um, it was, it was at times when the piano was the home instrument. It was like everybody had a piano. Everybody who wanted to sing or do sing-alongs, they had a piano in the living room. So it was different than now, of course. Um, and we were kind of late starters. Some some companies had started earlier, um, but with that motto, quality will prevail. Um, it was um, a success story from the get-go. Um, which was, it's, it's funny to see in these in this old um, books, you know, every, every couple of years, a new factory, in, bigger, bigger, bigger every time. Right. It's, uh, it's a different time. It was really a different time. <laughs> um, and then we, we moved to Braunschweig in the uh, late 20s. From today's perspective, in time and luckily, otherwise we would have been sitting on the wrong side of the wall. East Germany. Yeah. East Germany, yes. Um, so we're, we're currently in former West Germany. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm sorry, young people <laughs> <laughs> might have to look that up. It's um, <laughs> like my children. Um, and then we, after, after the Second World War, when Europe was destroyed, we started out with, with and now we're coming back to year 116, um, with, with a rather small piano that was a very good quality at a very good good price for what you get. And that was really the, the uh, foundation of Schimmel's success in, in the second part of the last century. Um, Schimmel was everywhere, in every living room, so to speak. Um, and then uh, in the, uh, about 20 years ago, when uh, things changed in the piano industry, we changed our, our um, strategy as well and went strictly high-end. Okay. Um, that's what we uh, had. And that was when uh, 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 pianos from other parts of the world where labor was cheaper was yes. were, were yes. flooding when, the market. Yeah. When it was flooding the market from, from uh, basically the Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, formerly it was Japan and then it, now it's moving China and, and uh, also Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we went strictly for premium quality. Um, we have this Schimmel concert line now, which is really what we're focusing on. And uh, the more so we, we are in daily into what, what you described earlier in uh, being, being in, into this totally fascinating world of, of vibes and sounds and powers and co sound colors. Um, so it's a really um, a pleasure to talk about that. <laughs> In Britain, the last piano manufacturers closed, I believe, about eight years ago, which I think was very disappointing news. Um, how is Schimmel faring in this brave new world? <laughs> in a way, still like 130 years ago, quality will prevail. Um, it's only about quality. If, some, if, if someone wants to spend a certain amount of money, he has still a lot of choices. Um, it's, we, we, we do the best we can to make th the best piano and hope that many people have the same experience that you had, that you just sit down and you just want it. Um, it's, it's strictly about quality. 
we cannot make compromises in materials or in the um, amount of hours we put in a, in a piano. So it's only quality. And if you were speaking to uh, a young kid who's only ever experienced playing musical instruments maybe on his iPad or her iPhone, what would you say to them to encourage them to have a go on a, a real one? That is sometimes a challenge, um, especially because the, the, the young generations and the younger they are, the more so, they are so used to, the, to this immediate reward they get from anything they do digital. It's, you know, you can, you can play with it for, for hours. It's not, not very challenging. Um, it doesn't take what it, what it takes to, to learn a, an, an acoustic instrument. Um, it's a lot of practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, we are, what we are doing is, um, and the rest of the industry tries as well, to c come up with new forms of, of learning and first impression of a piano. So, so they have it, it's more like a, like a game than, than, than a lesson. Sure. Um, and of course, you can you can show them if you sh um, if you sh if you explain to them with with, li with these little samples we have of an action and a key how the piano works. If you if you sh show them simply the different kind of sound it produces, you, you get their attention. Mm -hmm. So so then it's then it's again you get you, you get them where they are kids and curious. Um, but the but the basic challenge is that, that uh, they are so used to this easy digital life. Mm -hmm. I think I, an, a, a moment I had with all, all three of my children was just getting them to play uh, a single note repeatedly and then I improvised over the top and suddenly they were in front of this experience and I think it's, uh, there are gambits like that I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I have, I have three children too and um, we did it, um, I mean every kid is different that's what you learn with your parent also. Yeah. Uh, there is no she. <laughs> That's why there's no manual. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but you have to catch them by their curiosity and, and do it, yeah, like you, like you described, it's a little bit like a game. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for your time. It really has been a mind-blowing experience. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant. And I'm such a fan of, of what you do. I think it's brilliant. Thank you. Great the, stuff. Uh, thanks, Anna.